a KQED television production. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... Safe Catch Elite Wild Tuna. Great for athletes, kids, and pregnancy. Safe Catch tests each and every fish for mercury. Available at nearby stores. Walmart Global E-Commerce, with small, agile work teams, is focused on big data, engineering, and e-commerce innovations. Careers available at walmartlabs.com. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Natural Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport, now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. IRG has over 250 types of natural stone choices in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin or at marblecompany.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, geriatric nurse care manager Jeannie LaHaye is a nurse who truly knows the meaning of patience and compassion and understands that the little things can make a big difference. Standards, she says, that apply equally to eateries. And union secretary treasurer Andreas Kluver is no stranger to tough negotiations. He creates dialogue and compromises, often over lunch or dinner. And the reward is discovering new dining destinations. But first, jeweler Glenn Dizon designs and creates beautiful jewelry with gems that speak to him, just like the piece I have on. These gifts are shared to celebrate joy, love, and happiness. Emotions that are reflected in the sparkle of his North Bay restaurant that offers the flavors of the Caribbean made with Cal Fresh ingredients. On 4th Street in San Rafael, it's called Whippersnapper Restaurant. Whippersnapper is a fun, eclectic restaurant. We kind of coined the name to be the feel-good restaurant of Marin. My name is Bill Higgins. I'm chef owner of Whippersnapper Restaurant here in San Rafael. Whippersnapper to me means fun, kind of smart alecky at the same time. When I was growing up working in restaurants when I was 13, I was the young whippersnapper in all those restaurants. People were calling me that, and that name just kind of stuck with me as like, why don't I name a restaurant this? I did spend some time in Florida, and I did get the Caribbean bug down there. You know, they were using a lot of Latin American products. And then when I came back to California from there, I said, why not try to blend these together to make a restaurant with the bounty of California with this Caribbean products? I really like that, blending the chilies with the produce. We're fun, we're loud. So usually we have live music. That patio is really exciting. People love the dime back there. It's like a tropical jungle. It's probably one of the greatest joys to me is to meet new people that come into the restaurant that have never been in. Since we've been open for eight years, I have many long-term friendships that I've made from customers that have been coming back. I just want people to come in here and say, wow, that was a great meal at a great price, and it was really fun. So what do you get when you go? What's your first thing My you very with? favorite thing to eat there is usually what's ever on the special menu. If you ever has it on the menu, got to have the pork shoulder. It's served a huge chunk. I usually eat it for lunch and dinner. Big chunk of meat, delicious gravy that it's put in. It just falls apart. Absolutely wonderful. We actually start off with the uh, fried plantains. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a big fan of fried plantains. 
To be honest, when they came out, I was a bit disappointed because they were on a, a refried beans, mm. but it was excellent. I mean, the combination of the flavor of the fried plantains that were done just to perfection, the nice caramelized outside and the soft tender inside, together with the refried beans made just a just an explosion of flavor in our mouth, so it was oh, really, really great. Oh, really? Yes. So you were yeah. disappointed at first with the presentation? But it and was boom. perfect. It and was it was perfect. perfect. Yeah. We, we were a little skeptical as well, but we were really pleasantly surprised with that. We did have the mussels, and we weren't as pleased with that on the menu it said uh, it came with saffron and leeks but we couldn't taste or see the saffrons or the leeks but the food in general was amazing it was, right. it was yeah. that dish that did she order incorrectly there at the beginning with oh the no I, it's funny because so uh, the mussels are kind of one of my go-to dish because mm -hmm. in my opinion I think whippersnapper makes the best mussels I've ever had so I I order the mussels quite a bit and I, I just absolutely love it it's the kind of dish that when you finish with it you want to pick up the bowl and just drink the rest of it because the sauce that the mussels in I think are just right. just wonderful I saw plenty of leeks in there and I could taste the saffron but you know I, I just I just love that dish there mm -hmm. we also had the delicious fish tacos which I thought was really amazing it was all piled together it was absolutely delicious we also got the chicken skewers that are award-winning, and those had the peanut and coconut sauce that we were really thrilled with. I mean, just delicious. There was no overcooking on the outside. They were just unbelievably tender. I'm going to second what Jeannie said about the uh, chicken skewers, but I think the real signature was the jicama salad on the side that was just mm -hmm. the crunchiness of the mm -hmm. salad and a little bit of spice. Just a great juxtaposition to the nice uh, chicken skewers, and that was an excellent, excellent dish. All right, that calamari is something that's a go-to. The calamari is absolutely amazing. Uh, a lot of places won't serve the tentacles with the calamari, which is my favorite part because it's a little bit more crunchy. But Bill does his calamari with a slight Cajun spice to it. They serve it with a garlic aioli, which cools things down nicely. Perfect way to start a meal. And ceviche. Oh, the ceviche. The ceviche is just so fresh. They serve it with tiny, tiny bay scallops, which just absolutely melt in your mouth. Very, very sweet. Uh, it's served with tortilla chips. So you scoop all this beautiful calamari and lemon sauce, lime sauce, perfectly. You're making me hungry over here. Oh, it is, it is really <laughs> yeah, good. The ceviche nice is absolutely an amazing right dish, yeah. Well, I kind of went, I went with the uh, Cuban cowboy steak uh, with nice Spanish rice and black beans on the side. Uh, we cut it open, it was perfectly done on the inside, it was just really excellent. What were you drinking with it? I, I went with my this? wife and we got lucky, it was yeah. Sangria Sunday, mm -hmm. so we yeah. tried We tried the Sangrias and I have to say, this one was excellent. I think mm -hmm. it was just I the agree. perfect amount of fruit and spicing. Right. You know, if I didn't have to drive back to the East Bay, I would have had probably <laughs> a few more. It's yeah. really chock full of fruit and just a beautiful color as well. We usually get the sliders and my wife and I split them. They're relatively small, but Bill makes this absolutely amazing garlic aioli that he puts on them and the caramelized onions. You don't want to eat the sliders if you dress really nice, but you bite into the slider and, and the excess juice drips down your hand and you just want to lick your fingers. <laughs> but the other thing that we always get when you get there is his potatoes. The potatoes come piled high, really crunchy on the outside, soft, creamy on the inside. I actually you took actually the inside, <laughs> the in, licked my it finger. Up. It is just unbelievable. <laughs> and what about dessert? Do you get dessert when you go? Oh, uh, yes. You know, they, they make a bread pudding. It's got a nice crunch on the outside. We talked to Bill afterwards. His secret ingredient in the bread pudding is to use a ciabatta bread. So it has that really nice chew to it. And it's just smothered with this beautiful uh, chocolate caramel sauce. Beautiful dish, the passion fruit mousse. It's this tangy passion fruit. It's a wonderful fruit from Hawaii. Creamy, tangy, seriously. And you're passion very fruit passionate mousse. about passion, passion fruit, fruit mousse. mousse. The, mm -hmm. Everything is good there, but passion <laughs> fruit mousse. All right, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. Uh, fresh food, wonderful food. Food, perfect place to go to. All right, and Jeannie? Oh, I was really taken with the fish tacos and the skewers with the jicama salad. That was definitely a, 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 a reason to go. All right, and Andreas? Well, we felt it was a very festive but yet family-friendly environment with creative and exotic dishes, and I think it was kind of like an oasis that our family can't wait to get back to. All right, if you would like to try Whippersnapper Restaurant, it's located on 4th Street at G Street in San Rafael. The telephone number is 415-256-1818. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are accepted for parties of four or more, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $25.
cozy decor surprises at Jeannie's East Bay Pick, set in a shopping mall, the traditional Italian menu, detailed wine list, and friendly service make the island of Alameda a destination when you visit Trabocco Kitchen and Cocktails. I had two passions in my life. One was to become a professional soccer player and one to become a chef. I guess the first one is out of the picture. And look at me now. Ciao. I am Giuseppe Naccarelli and I'm chef owner at Trabocco restaurant in Alameda. The passion of cooking started a long time ago in the region of Abruzzi where I come in from. A lot of um, fresh seafood, a lot of meat items like lamb, like pork, and uh, a lot of vegetables. And we also make all our fresh pasta here in the house, seven days a week. Freshly made all our ravioli, agnolotti, chitarrine, fettuccine, and everything else. We do have this beautiful pizza oven from Naples, and it's a wood fire pizza oven that we only burn almonds wood. Very flavorful, not too strong. We do have specials every day. We do a rabbit on a rostizer, we do duck, we do chickens, we do the old pigs. Porchetta, every Friday night is, uh, is a porchetta night. Very proud of the wine list. We feature only Italians and Californian wines, as the closest as possible to Alameda. Very, very local oriented. Also, when it comes to the spirits, our uh, bar screams local. Hello, how are you? I used to love the television show Cheers when I was growing up. You know, everybody knows your name, and this is what the feeling uh, I want to create here at Trabocco. Now, Jeannie, Trabocco is a family-owned spot. You've got Italian Giuseppe, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he and his wife, Christina, have raised their family in Alameda. So we were really lucky to get them to open a restaurant in Alameda. I mean, not that I personally got them to open it, but I certainly have benefited from right. it. Yeah. So right. it's a very unusual location, a shopping mall, which normally I wouldn't look to for fine dining, but this restaurant is really out of this world. What is your go-to dish? The thing that really makes me fall in love with the place is the arugula and prosciutto pizza. They fly in the flour from Italy, wow. and I've actually had it on a first date with a bottle of wine, and it was all over. I mean, <laughs> really, I mean, it is. it will just make you fall in love with the place. It really is so fantastic. The last time that I went, I had the rabbit with the pancetta, and I could not believe how good it was. It was infused with rosemary somehow and I don't normally eat bunny but it but was it can be very good mm -hmm. a little tender bunny it was a very tender bunny and it was just so succulent and the rosemary flavor was just oozing out of it with a bacon drippings and the oh my god it was just to die for I have these two guys kind of both shaking your heads yeah. yes yeah. yes yes tell me about your experience well I have to admit I mean we've gone shopping in that mall many a times we didn't know this little jewel was there because you kind of it's kind of deceiving but the minute you walk in there it's an extremely elegant atmosphere yet still family oriented and there's some intimate areas so it's a very welcoming place the service was excellent the owner Giuseppe I think came by and He's actually from Abruz, so. okay He's from right yeah, yeah. yeah right. And he came and chatted with us and I thought that was a real and it was very genuine it was very yes. genuine so I think in terms of the environment I think that was one of the real strengths of the restaurant one of the amazing dishes we had there is the oxtail ravioli you know if it's cooked long enough it just melts in your mouth it's absolutely beautiful served with three big raviolis with reduced oxtail sauce in it. Ravioli is cooked to perfection, so it's toothy on the outside, no doughiness. Absolutely beautiful dish. Love the ravioli. We uh, asked what the recommendation was for the evening. It was a rotisserie chicken and wine sauce, and I have to admit the chicken was done perfectly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just tender and juicy. It wasn't overcooked where it would be falling off the bone, but it was just perfect. The polenta was just the right texture as well, too, and complemented very well with the uh, sautéed spinach and just added a good flavor. That was, I think, our favorite that we had. Mm -hmm. This time I got two dishes that I normally don't get. One was the swordfish carpaccio that was so delicate mm -hmm. and salty, and it was absolutely delicious. It was just creamy and yummy and so good. And then we also had the caprese salad that was Good. out of this world. 
It, you agree it just on melted. That? Oh, yeah. that dish was well. My wife and I were deciding between the caprese salad and the burrata and prosciutto, and the waitress was awesome. But she came by and she said, "We'll do a caprese salad, but add add the prosciutto oh, see, to there it." There we go. So the yes. and the tomatoes. I agree. Wow. You know, it's like winter, and the tomatoes were really sweet with a little bit of a crunch to them. The burrata was creamy, and then <laughs> paired with the uh, prosciutto on top, so you didn't have to put salt on it. The saltiness of the prosciutto, the sweetness of the tomatoes, the burrata, perfect dish. So Absolutely. you just sort of made your own mix. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the yeah. to the waitress's like suggestion. It. I mean, it was it was really the waitress was great. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about drinks because they have a, a lovely wine list. They have wine on tap from Rockwall, so local right. wines as well yes. as Italians. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I also tried a cocktail just because we were going on the show and I tried the Dopo Tempo with a St. George's. Another local? Bonotiello, I think mm -hmm. it's called, Limoncello and Thyme. It was out of this world. See, all in the name of research. Yes, yes, I was <laughs> there you go. my research. <laughs> Tell me about the fish stew. Mm, to be honest with you, it was a little disappointing because uh, it looked beautiful, it tasted really good, but it was a little bit gritty. Uh, mm. The clams, and, and I must say, the owner was just wonderful because we sent it, we actually sent the dish back, but the owner came out immediately and said, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, I keep my, my clams under running water, but this is, just happens when you when you serve yeah. clams, sometimes it's a little bit gritty. But they, the service yeah. was good. The, they, you know? And they took yeah. it, the took it away. The owner was just wonderful coming out and talking to us. So I must say I love that. Yeah. yeah. And Giuseppe is so yeah. so service oriented yeah. and so warm and welcoming. Yeah. You see him hugging yeah. everyone that comes in the restaurant. <laughs> I know. That's why they've been such a hit with the local community. Yeah. They've really bent over backwards to yeah. try to make it a good experience. So. And do you get desserts? Do you ever have room for dessert? Oh yes. I'm, I'm a huge dessert queen and the torta chocolata wasn't too rich. It was just perfect after dinner. So we really enjoyed that. And we also had an after dinner cocktail by Luigi. It was just perfect with the torta. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. We started with a cocktail out of research. And then we ended with <laughs> yes. a cocktail out of yes. research. And we did not drive home. <laughs> but no. Excellent. We had to try the tiramisu. I always try tiramisu when I go eat Italian. And this one was one of the better ones I've had. The texture was perfect. The powder on the top went very well with the cream. Really enjoyed the tiramisu. All right, Jeannie, this is your restaurant. Give us a quick summary. Check out Turboco if you'd like a Michelin Guide quality dining experience for special occasions, an intimate dinner, or first date, or family style dining, or a, a cocktail with a friend or neighbor. And Andreas? I'd say it's an open and elegant ambiance, a great variety of dishes, some of which were spot on and we would definitely return. Okay, and Glenn? Uh, if I was in the area, I'd absolutely go back there for some pastas. Driving from San Rafael, I probably wouldn't. Okay, if you would like to try Traboco Kitchen and Cocktails, it's located in South Shore Center at Park in Alameda. The telephone number is 510-521-1152. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are accepted, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $50. If you like wine, I encourage you to try grappa. A type of brandy, grappa is distilled from grapes. In Italy, folks don't waste a thing, so they use the wine's pomace, the stems, skins, and seeds left over after winemaking, and distill it. Each grappa is unique, depending upon the grapes it's made from. For example, this is distilled from Sangiovese grapes grown in Tuscany, just like this wine. But you can have grappa from many varieties. It can be enjoyed as a digestif at the end of a meal or used in trend-driven cocktails. No doubt it's strong, up to about 60% alcohol, and some say it puts hair on your chest. I say it puts a smile on your face. A certified green business, Andreas's pick focuses on local, sustainable, and made from scratch modern German fare. It also boasts the largest selection of German beers in the East Bay. In Berkeley, it's called Gallenkitzel German Restaurant. There we go. In the beginning, opening the restaurant, I was always on the phone with my grandma. I wanted to make sure I don't lose any recipes, and she's still looking over my shoulder and telling me, don't do it this way, it's a shortcut, do it this way, it's better. Schönen guten Tag, my name is Anja, and this is Kai, my husband. We are the owner of the German restaurant Gaumenkitzel in Berkeley. So no red cabbage, please? So Gaumenkitzel got its name in memory of my grandpa, and when we were eating, he said, mmm, what a Gaumenkitzel. So Gaumenkitzel actually means, literally translated, tickle your taste buds. 
German cuisine is very versatile. Kai, my husband, he's from the south of Germany. This is where we got all the southern influenced dishes like sweet dumplings, spätzle, breaded schnitzel, more the hardy dishes. I'm from Hamburg. The cuisine in Hamburg is very influenced by fish, fresh fruit, even dry fruit, and spices. It can be very light. You can have a lot of vegetarian dishes. I often have people asking me where I got all my energy. I actually get it from all the guests. Oh, They're really supporting and asking for specials. So I'm challenged to get that right for them. You speak German. I do right? actually, yes. All right, so how's my Gaumann Kitzel? Is that? Your pronunciation is excellent. <laughs> it's actually. excellent. It's excellent. My family is from Hamburg, and that is where the owners are from. So the cooking is more traditional northern German rather than kind of the southern German cooking that you have in most German restaurants in the Bay Area. The ambiance is very nice. It kind of, you walk in and you kind of feel like you're maybe walking to a barn house. It has a very neighborhood feel. You mm -hmm. see a lot of families. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually tend to go for brunch there. We like to go for the nice hearty German breads and cheeses and, and the, they have a Bauernfrühstück. It's got eggs and bacon and everything mixed Bauernfrühstück. together. Bauernfrühstück. Bauernfrühstück. Farmer's Everybody breakfast. Everybody come on. Yeah. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. Just drink a little more beer <laughs> and then you <laughs> Yeah, no yeah, problem. Um, <laughs> and but. let's talk about the bread. It's a bread. dollar and it's worth it. And though. it is worth it. It is worth it. Let's I mean, talk about that bread. Well, German bread is, is hearty. Right. It's a rye bread and you just put the nice butter on it. It's It's got consistency to it. What did you think? What Can was your I experience? just talk about the bread? <laughs> 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 I mean, the bread, you know, because you kind of get loose. put off, you know, it's like a dollar for bread. Everyone serves bread for free. You know, I would have paid $10 for the bread. <laughs> the bread was so good because it's the crust is really crunchy and the inside is just like this chewiness wonderful bread. I've grown up eating German bread. This is some of the best bread. Well, where did you go from the bread? Uh, went to the smoked pork chops. Smoked oh, pork chops wow. are over the top. So good. Perfect combination of smokiness and saltiness. They serve it with uh, sauerkraut. Absolutely perfect. A little bit of sourness to meld with the, the smokiness and the saltiness. Served with mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes were creamy, oh, done perfectly. Amazing. Perfect dish. Did you Absolutely have that perfect. dish as well? Oh, oh God, it was so gone. good. <laughs> oh, my oh, my gosh. gosh. You need a fan? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we started off with the knockwurst and cheese platter, which was unbelievable. I mean, this was so savory and delicious, and the cheeses were so creamy and scrumptious. It was just, you know, you couldn't eat enough of it. I also ordered the butternut squash soup, just absolutely delicious. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of the bread, they did. They ran out of the uh, whole wheat bread because I guess you must have been there right before. Oh yeah, I ate all the bread. Right. I'm yeah, sorry, I didn't bread. save you any. <laughs> so they um, had uh, flaxseed mm. bread and as a replacement. I love flaxseed bread. It was one of the best I'd ever had. So from there, we ended up going on to the um, Jaeger schnitzel, cut with the mashed potatoes that. <laughs> okay, now we do need a fan. Everybody yes, I, I, oh. Yeah, I, I'm kind of traditionalist. Like the dish that I like the most is the pork loin and the creamy mustard sauce. If it's diced pork loin, kind of in a very rich, thick, creamy mustard sauce. It's done over a bit of spätzle, mm -hmm. which actually is a southern German uh, starch. It's an exquisite dish. I really feel like I'm sitting back in my grandmother's kitchen kind of eating the food that she used to make for us. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit more about what you had for your main course. We were really surprised by the rainbow trout. This fish was impeccable, and I highly recommend it. It was salty. It was less than 48 hours old, according to the wait staff. It was tender. It was juicy. We were really shocked. And then we also got the goulash. I thought that was a teensy tiny bit dry, but overall, it, you know, the red wine, reduction sauce with the mushrooms and the creamy spetzla. Am I saying yes, that right? Yes. Um, <laughs> it was, oh. We didn't know we were going to get a German lesson. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm glad I got a German lesson. It was really fantastic. Yeah, yeah quite So the goulash surprise. was an absolute hit. Yeah. Absolute hit. Yes. Now to wash all this down, of course, they are known for their beer list. I mean, they have some, they have about 14 or 15 beautiful German wine producers, but the beer list is extensive and well known. Yes, and, and I must say I'm a bit of a beer snob. This is the only place in the Bay Area where they've actually poured a draft German beer properly. Mm. You need to have the proper amount of foam to the beer, so when you take that first sip, you kind of get that fluffy bitterness uh, combined with the rich texture of the beer itself, and it mixes really well. 
service was absolutely perfect because yeah. we asked the waiter for some tips. I told him the kind of beer we like. He served me a beer that was absolutely delicious. The one thing I love about the beer, they have so many different beers on the menu and they have a a very specific glass for every That's type of beer they right. have. And my wife ordered the, the flight of beers, so it comes on this laminated map of Germany with little arrows to where all the beers came from. I thought that was such a cool touch. What about pricing? We thought the pricing was very reasonable, especially for the level of service and the welcoming atmosphere, that it was just a perfect place to be able to have a conversation as well. You can really hear the person across from you. Very reasonably very priced. Very affordable. All right, very this affordable. is your spot, Andreas. Wrap it up for us. Well, I think it's a, a non-pretentious, authentic northern German cuisine. I think it has adventurous dishes, but they stay true to their northern German roots. Um, but to be honest, I would go back just for the beer alone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jeannie? I would go back there in a heartbeat. All right. And Glenn? We went to dinner with my brother-in-law. He already announced he wants to go there for his birthday in December. <laughs> so it's a great restaurant. All right, if you would like to try Gelman Kitzel German Restaurant, it's located on San Pablo Avenue at Cowper Street in Berkeley. The telephone number is 510-647-5016. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. I want to thank my great guests on this week's show. Glenn Dizon with his undiscovered jewel serving Caribbean cooking at Whippersnapper Restaurant in San Rafael. Jeannie LaHaye, whose spot features regional Italian fare and creative cocktails at Traboco Kitchen and Cocktails in Alameda. And Andreas Kluver, who returns to the familiar flavors of Germany at Gaumann Kitzel German Restaurant in Berkeley. Now, we really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check, please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and where you'll find my notes on the wines and beer we're drinking today. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check, Please! Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by IRG has over 250 natural stone choices and over 10,000 stone slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin or at marblecompany.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world iFlyOAK.com. Natural mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Sutter Health CPMC, 7,000 employees, nurses, and physicians caring for their communities every day. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Walmart Global E-Commerce, with small, agile work teams, is focused on big data, open source engineering, and e-commerce innovations. Careers at walmartlabs.com. Safe Catch Elite Wild Tuna, great for athletes, kids, and pregnancy. Safe Catch tests each and every fish for mercury. Online at safecatch.com.